Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we will continue with the study of finite dimensional representations of uh, SLN plus 1 C. So, we actually uh, saw some calculations in the last class. We will continue with that uh, calculation now. So, recall that we have this triangular decomposition that says that uh, n minus direct sum h direct sum n plus is exactly equal to g. So, now what we can do? We can actually take a basis of uh, these uh, things and then put together and then get uh, basis of g. Using that basis of g, using that root vectors basically, we can actually construct the basis of uh, ug that is the universal mapping algebra. So, that basis what we are interested in. If you actually use this triangular decomposition and use the PBW theorem, then it is easy to see that then the ug is indeed written as the product of these two copies of u n minus u h and u n plus. Okay. So, basically it says that u g is just a span of uh, three type of product of elements. Okay. One is coming from the basis of n minus, another one is coming from the basis of h and another one is coming from n plus. So, now uh, if we start with V being finite dimensional representation of G, so then we can easily see that the weights of V, so that is going to be only finite. Okay. So, this cardinality of the weights is going to be finite. So, whenever you apply Xi, the weight actually increases. Okay. So, since weight of V is finite, so we will not be able to apply Xi's. So, infinitely many number of times. Okay. So, that actually tells you that, so you each time when you apply some x i, let us start with the weight vector v inside v mu. If I apply x i on v, then we increase the weight by alpha i. Now, if you take some other x i x j and then apply it on this, then what happens? So, then the, again the weight is increased by alpha j, but it cannot go forever. So, it has to stop at some point. So, that actually tells you that there will be a vector inside v your, your representation. So, there exists a vector, again non-zero vector inside your representation v such that x i v will be 0 for all i range from 1 to n. Okay. So, such vectors will be called highest weight vectors. Okay. Such vector is called highest weight vector. Then observe that if V is highest weight vector inside your V, then x v must be 0 for all x in n plus. That is because n plus is generated by x 1 etcetera x n. Okay. So, similar to highest weight vector, one can also define lowest weight vector because we are always going to work with n plus, we just uh, fix the highest weight vector. So, now it is easy to see x v is 0 for all x in n plus. Since v is a weight vector, it has to come from some weight space v mu. The action of h is going to be just a scalar multiplication. So, it is given by mu of h v for all h and h. So, now if you go back to this uh, uh, decomposition of u g into these uh, u n minus u h and u n plus, then you can easily see that using the PBW type basis that entire u n plus copy actually just kills these vectors. Okay. So, only that, uh, uh, so I will leave it as exercise, this is not very hard to prove. If you take u n plus and then apply it on v, then you get exactly C v. That is because x v is 0 for all x in n plus. If you take any element of u n plus, that will be the 
like the spanning set that will be the product of elements from n plus all of them kills. So, you get just C. Now, if I take u h how is how it is going to act on C v since h is acting as scalar on v for all h. So, u h is going to be just a span of product of elements from h that also going to act as scalar on v. So, again this is going to be C v. So, this implies that u g v is just given by u n minus v. Okay. So, if you think about it this is going to be the span of just you fix some order of the positive roots let us call it beta 1 etcetera beta n. So, this is the some order okay, positive roots. So, that recall that phi plus is nothing but epsilon i minus epsilon j where 1 less than or equal to i less than j less than or equal to n plus 1. So, you fix some ordering on these positive roots that you call it beta 1 etcetera beta n. Okay. So, then it is clear from PBW type cases that y beta 1 power r 1 etcetera y beta n power r n. So, that will form a basis for the u n minus. Okay. So, because this y betas they are the elements of g minus beta. So, this is the notation. Okay. So, now if you apply these operators on V, so then you can easily see that. So, this will actually form spanning set for this U G of V. Okay. So, now if you take this sub module, so this is indeed a G sub module generated by this highest weight vector then we have some information about the weights of that sub module. Okay. The weights of this u g v you can see that this is indeed contained in okay, lambda minus okay, e z plus span of okay, let us write it here some r 1 beta 1 plus etcetera r n beta n where this r is comes from non additive integers. Okay. So, basically this is the cone. So, note that, so we already have uh, what, uh, what are all this phi plus. So, phi plus also can be written as follows. So, this is exactly alpha i plus etcetera alpha j for 1 less than less not equal to i less than j less not equal to n. So, in particularly if you take the negative roots it will be the minus of this. Okay. So, all this beta i's can be rewritten in terms of alpha i's. So, in particularly what is there on the right side. So, this is can be identified with lambda minus q plus where q plus is the cone which is spanned by e z plus span of these alpha i's i range from 1 to 8. It is not hard to see that weight of this u g v is indeed contained in this cone lambda minus q plus. So, this is what we call as cone okay, bounded above by lambda. So, this motivates us to actually define partial order on h star. Okay. So, here is the partial order. So, we compare lambda and mu. So, where lambda and mu comes from h star. If and only if lambda minus mu is in q plus. So, this is the order that we actually take it. So, indeed what we proved, we proved that if mu is a weight of this module generated by this highest weight vector v which has weight lambda. Okay. 
sorry I want to fix the lambda's weight. So, this is uh, lambda we will keep it as highest weight. So, then you can you, you can see that uh, uh, this mu is indeed less than or equal to lambda. So, that is what uh, we have proved. Okay. So, now since uh, we have the spanning set that actually comes from this PBW type pieces. Okay. So, just observe what we have proved. So, we proved that u g v if v comes from v lambda such that x i v is 0 for all i ranging from 1 to n which can be chosen. Then the u g v which is the sub module which is g sub module generated by v in let us say capital V. So, then this is given by the span of y beta 1 power r 1 etcetera y beta n r n applied on v where r 1 etcetera r n are all greater than equal to 0. Okay, because this is the spanning set then you can easily see that the weight of this particular vector y beta 1 r 1 etcetera y beta n r n v is going to be exactly lambda minus r 1 beta 1 plus etcetera plus r n beta n. So, this is the calculation that we did last time. So, using that you can see that all the weights if it survives that must be less than or equal to lambda. Now, this weight if it is lambda if and only if all this r 1 etcetera r n must be 0. That tells you that if you take this u g v and then look at this lambda weight space the dimension of that must be just 1 because this is indeed spanned by this highest weight vector v. Okay, so, that is why the dimension of that is exactly 1. So, let us actually write down what are all things that we have proved so far. So, here is the proportion. Let us take V being a finite dimensional G module and assume that V is generated by this highest weight vector V. So, this is the highest weight vector with highest weight lambda. So, this lambda is genuinely called highest weight that is because all other weights are smaller than lambda in this space. Okay. So, now uh, what we have proved? We proved that the weight of V must be contained in lambda minus q plus and the second thing that we proved the dimension of V lambda space has 1 and uh, if we take okay, this capital V, so that is indeed spanned by these uh, vectors y beta 1 power r 1 etcetera y beta n power r n applied on v where r 1 etcetera r n they are all non negative integers. Okay. So, from this we will be able to actually get some basis of v theoretically. So, that kind of basis we call call them PBW type basis. Okay. But in practice, it will be very, very difficult to find such basis even for type A which is SLN plus 1. Okay. So, now uh, if we think about it more, uh, we can also use uh, SL2 representation theory and conclude something more about uh, uh, this highest weight lambda. So, we can prove that this lambda actually takes non-negative integral value when you apply it on h i. So, this lambda of h i is going to be in e z plus for all i range from 1 to n. So, let us see how one can prove this. So, let us take again this S L 2 copy. So, this is the S L 2 copy. Now, look at this S L 2 module generated by this uh, highest weight vector v. And note that, so 
So, this is exactly given by the span of just y i powers applied on v, okay, where r is greater than or equal to 0. So, because x i v is 0 and h v is going, h i v is going to give you some lambda h i v, okay, h i v is going to give you lambda of h i v. So, so the only thing that remains is just y i powers. So, that is what you get. Since this is a finite dimensional space, so this is a finite dimensional space. So, using the SL2 representation theory, we can easily see that this must be a this must be an irreducible representation. Okay. So, this is this is supposed to be irreducible SL2 representation. So, that is easy to verify. So, using that we can conclude that okay. So, this representation must be isomorphic to some V of m, some V of m okay. and this m must be non-negative integer and since the weight of this y i power r v is going to be lambda of h i minus 2 r. So, this lambda of h i is going to be the highest weight for the SL2 action. So, that means this m must be exactly lambda of h i, there is no other option. So, that forces that this must be non-negative integer for all i, okay, lambda of h i must be non-negative integer. So, such weights we call them dominant, okay. So, so here is the definition of dominant weight, those lambda inside h star is called dominant if lambda of h i is nothing but non-negative integer for all i range from 1 to n. If lambda of h i just integers then we call them integral. Okay. So, these are special integral weights which are called dominant. And what we indeed proved if we start with this highest weight uh, module. Okay. A finite dimensional representation is said to be highest weight module if it is generated by some highest weight vector and again it corresponds to the highest weight let us say some lambda. So, then if we have a highest weight module then indeed what we proved the corresponding highest weight must be dominant weight that is what we have proved. Okay. So, now let us actually translate uh, this uh, dominant uh, definition in terms of the epsilon i basis. So, if you actually uh, translate it uh, what you can do you can see that uh, this lambda is dominant if and only if. So, lambda of h i must be integer for all i range from 1 to n. So, that is by definition. So, this is actually same as saying if you write lambda in terms of the epsilon i basis. So, then this is equivalent to saying a i minus a i plus 1 must be non-negative integer. Okay. So, this I will have it as exercise you can actually just work it out. And again this partial order that we have defined okay, which is called dominance order that is also actually very crucial. So, we will un try to understand what it means in terms of the epsilon i basis. Let us say lambda and mu are given element in h star write lambda in terms of the epsilons and then write mu again in terms of epsilons. So, then lambda is greater than or equal to mu if and only if by definition lambda minus mu is in the q plus which is the z plus span of alpha i. So, now if and only if you can you can conclude using this bunch of this a i's and b j's. So, this is same as saying that a 1 is greater than or equal to b 1, a 1 plus a 2 is greater than or equal to b 1 plus b 2 and so on. 
then if you take a1 plus etc plus an that should be written equal to b1 plus etc plus bn now since this lambda mu they are all coming from h star the sum of the coordinates must be same so a1 plus etc an plus 1 that should be same as this b1 plus etc bn plus 1 because up to modulo this uh, uh, epsilon 1 plus etc epsilon n plus 1 we have to consider so that is why these coordinates be the sum should be equal. Okay, so, this is how it translates the dominance order in terms of the epsilon i basis. So, this is also a good information to keep it. Okay. So, now uh, we can also use uh, these uh, chevalet generators uh, to rewrite uh, the spanning set. Okay, maybe I will actually start with this uh, very basic exercise. So, if you think about it, um, if I take this u n plus, okay, we already know that it has a basis in terms of the root vectors. Okay. So, this is indeed spanned by y beta 1 power r 1 etcetera y beta n power r n where r 1 etcetera r n they are all coming from the non-negative integers where beta 1 etcetera beta n. So, this is the ordered positive roots. Okay. So, now uh, if we take this Chevalier generators which, which are y i, we know that the Chevalier generators indeed generate n plus sorry n minus as Lie algebra. Okay. So, that means if you take this u n minus sorry u n minus. So, that is also again if you think about as associative algebra. So, this also should be generated by this y i's because any y beta that will be given in terms of the actually the Lie right norm Lie word in terms of y i's that is easy to check. So, now any Lie word okay or the Lie uh, right termed Lie word, Lie monomial, you can also write it in terms of the regular monomial. So, if you use this kind of change of basis, then you can easily see that. So, this is also indeed spanned by, so this y i 1 etcetera y i r, where i 1 etcetera i r comes from this 1 to n. Now, r can be written equal to 0. So, I am not actually indeed claiming that uh, uh, this is indeed a basis, so, but one can actually say that this is indeed a spanning set and it is actually a very nice uh, research problem uh, to find basis out of these words okay? because there are some relations that are there inside your n minus. For example, if you take uh, y i, y i applied on y i plus 1. So, that is going to be actually 0. Okay. So, such relations are actually going to give some relation among these uh, letters y i's. So, if you use it, uh, you have to actually reduce this spanning set to your basis. Okay. I guess we still so, one can actually kind of like I said uh, some Grobener basis type of ideas to get the basis out of these words, okay. maybe that can be discussed uh, elsewhere. So, now uh, if you take this type of spanning set, it is easy to see that now if you take V being the highest weight representation, okay, this is uh, let us say highest weight representation of highest weight lambda. So, then this is again given by the span of y i 1 etcetera y i r applied on v, where r greater than equal to 0 and i 1 etcetera i r comes from 1 to n. Now, using this spanning set also, we can actually conclude whatever we have proved so far. Okay. All the information that I wrote it here can be proved using that uh, 
spanning set as well. Again, it is a very difficult problem to find basis using these words. Okay. So, in some sense, uh, these yi's uh, they are the lowering operators. Okay, in the in terms of the crystal basis, so we have some understanding of uh, basis that comes from uh, these type of uh, elements. Okay, but we don't have much information about uh, basis that comes from this PBW type basis. Okay, so. This is actually indeed uh, uh, tells you about uh, uh, highest weight representations. So, what we want to ultimately prove, okay. So, to classify actually finite dimensional irreducible representations, so we are going to actually uh, say that it is enough to classify finite dimensional highest weight representations. So, at least uh, we will actually uh, make. Uh, the one way statement. So, here is the proportion. So, if V is a finite dimensional irreducible G module, so then V is a highest weight representation. Okay. So, why this is true? So, if you start with V being irreducible, choose any vector which is non zero from V. Okay, and which is also highest weight vector. So, choose vector V in V lambda which is highest weight weight vector and for any finite dimensional representation highest weight vectors exist. Okay, that is not a problem because the weights are finite. So, we cannot keep adding alpha i's. So, at some point we have to stop, start with any weight and then keep applying x i's. Then you reach some point after that you cannot up keep adding. So, at that point if it is non-zero that must be highest weight weight. So, now if you choose this then it is immediate that v must be exactly given by this u g v which is u n minus v. Okay. So, that is because this is non-zero sub module. So, since this is a non-zero sub module, so v must be equal to u g v because u being uh, sorry v being irreducible. So, that tells you that any given finite dimensional irreducible module must be highest weight module. Okay. So, the converse is non trivial fact. So, we will actually use the action of Casimir element to prove that the converse of this proportion is also true. That is, if V is a highest weight representation of G, then V must be irreducible. Of course, everything about finite dimensional representation. Okay. So, now with this actually we can actually uh, come down to the classification problem to this classification of finite dimensional highest weight representation. So, for that we will use the theory of uh, uh, D N Verma. So, he actually constructed uh, this universal highest weight representation called Verma modules nowadays and then we can identify any given uh, highest weight representation as quotient of this, uh, these Verma modules. Okay. So, we will see the construction of Verma modules in the next class and then using that construction we will actually classify all finite dimensional irreducible representation of SLN plus 1c. So, after that uh, we will try to understand the characters and uh, is there any close formula for the characters and so on. Okay, I will stop here. So, we will continue uh, in the next class. Thank you.